Hello folks. Well, many of you have seen my videos using my old 1982 Rinker bow rider in the past. Some of you may remember some of those moments. I guess I fell in love with boating after spending time out on the USS Midway aircraft carrier with three RF-4B Phantom jets that we supported when the Marines went out for carrier calls with the Navy. That was the most exciting time of my 33 years in the Marine Corps. I've visited the Midway many times since it's now a floating museum in San Diego. If you're out there, I recommend you see it because it's just amazing. Well, before there were all kinds of drones and miniature cameras, I used my boat to fly the first DJI Phantom on board with a GoPro. It proved more challenging to land on the moving boat than I thought. Well, then I decided to try to land my flying shark on it. This also proved to be quite challenging as the landing zone is pretty small. Well, later on I also decided to use the boat to have a skipper chase scene with Jeff. That was a blast. Well, I've flown my skipper several times using the boat, and it's always fun to do so from out in the middle of the lake. Thanks to all the support from folks, I was donated models to get me back flying, and with insurance I was able to get into another house albeit the insurance didn't cover half of what we lost, but it's a good thing we had it. I really loved that old boat, and although it didn't cost much, it never failed me. Unfortunately, when the fire burned down my house, it also burned down my boat and every other vehicle and thing I owned. Well, then last November, a fellow told me he had a boat I could have. It was in storage for many years, and it needed cleaning up. I said okay, and we drove up to Minneapolis and picked it up. But during the winter, I cleaned it up and put in a new radio as the old one didn't work. I didn't know if it would run or not, and after a long winter of being patient, I was finally able to get it out in May. Well, things did not go well. It started, but halfway out across the lake, it got very hot and quit. The temperature gauge wasn't working, so I did not notice it was not running hot as the engine was covered. Well, this was a bummer because my wife and I in our 70s had to row the boat back to the dock. This took an hour and a half due to the headwind and about killed us. <laughs> well, needless to say, I was disappointed for sure. When I got the boat home, I began researching and found the sea pump in the lower leg of the prop probably failed. It pumps water up to the main water pump in the engine, which is a 3.0, 130 horsepower GM Merc Cruiser engine. Well, next, I decided since the boat places wanted thousands of dollars to figure out what I needed, that I go ahead and attempt the repairs myself. <laughs> well, I took the entire lower end of the Alpha 1 drive apart. This was new to me, and this is where the transmission to C-Pump and the prop are located. Well, I found the exhaust pipe and C-Pump were damaged, so I replaced them. It was quite a chore, as it's quite heavy to maneuver around, especially trying to get it and the shifter connected back up correctly and lifting it back up into place by myself, but I did. Well, confident that all was well with the cooling, I tried to run the boat in a driveway with water muffs on and found it ran at speed but didn't idle very well. I wasn't sure if I had ruined the engine. Also, the starter wasn't working all the time. At that point, I decided to take the starter solenoid apart and clean and lubricate it back up, which fixed it. I also found that the plug that connects the engine to the dashboard wasn't plugged in far enough to make contact with the temperature gauge. Well, I cleaned that connector and tightened it down with zip ties, and bingo, the temperature gauge now worked. Well, since it was running kind of rough, I decided to change the plugs and points, set the time, and take it out again. Well, this time it ran fair at speed, but quit every time it came to idle. Uh, disappointed and fearing a burnt valve, a broken ring, or something worse, I took it back home. At this point, I decided to take the head off and see for myself. This was also quite a chore. There's also a unique switch and cable system on top of the robber cover which must be set up correctly. 
It is a shift interrupt switch there. What it does is momentarily kill the engine for a second so the transmission can shift out of gear or into reverse. So if that's not set up correctly, the engine is going to quit totally and it must be restarted. Without this setup, you can't shift out of gear as I found out, making it very hard to dock. Well, still figuring it's going to cost me thousands to have the boat repair in place do this, and who knows what they'd tell me after they got it apart. I decided to take the linkages off, then the rocker cover. You know, once I started with that first bolt, I knew there was no turning back. So I dug in hoping I'd find something definitive, but not detrimental. And that is exactly what I found and what I was hoping for. A blown head gasket. As you can see, it was blown between the two center pistons which traveled together allowing it to run fair at high speed but quit at idle. I was lucky where it blew because no water entered the engine anywhere else to contaminate it or the oil. You know, changing the oil on this is also a chore because it has to be pumped out through the dipstick hole because there's no drain plug. <laughs> well, the cylinders and valves showed no sign of wear and I was very happy. I was able to pick up a head gasket for only 39 bucks a few days later. At that point I was hoping I would still could remember how to put it back together as at my age, well, <laughs> you know. Well, I borrowed a torque wrench from Ace Hardware in town and began the process. At the same time I changed the coil and plug wires. You know, when done, I put the muffs on it and started it right up. Adjusting the carb air screw on this two barrel holly is best set at one and a half turns out but fine-tuning must be done in gear on the water at idle for best results as the engine needs to be under load. By the way, when I was learning mechanics, we called electric motors motors and combustion engines engines. So why they call combustion-powered boats motor boats is beyond me. It should be called an engine boat. Same thing with motorcycles. They should be called engine cycles, right? <laughs> Well, as you can see, I was able to fix the boat and it now runs perfectly. Albeit, I had to find a new fuel gauge for it, so that had to be changed too. But not to worry about that now, and I'm also carrying a trolling motor in just in case. Well, since inboards are quite new to me, I find that it just seemed awfully tail heavy when you start out, and the bow really goes high till you get up on the step and start running level. Well, I could adjust the angle of the motor with hydraulics, but for efficiently it's supposed to be level with the keel. My rinker had a whale tail on the engine and kept the boat from porpoising or climbing during acceleration and made for good water skiing as my first attempt in 40 years showed when I got up the first time. I didn't realize what that whale tail was doing or why it was there. So I started looking for whale tail again and I found these smart tabs. You know, from all the reports and reviews on them, I was convinced to try them, so I'm installing them today and I'm going to take the boat out to see how much of a difference they actually make. Well, you see, the theory behind these smart tabs is that they increase the length of the hull and are tilted down at zero speed. Well, as the boat begins moving, they cause the stern to lift, like elevators on an airplane. Well, there are gas shocks on them, mine are 60 pounds, and they actually could be more or less for the size of the boat you have. Well, as you move forward, they level out. They also work independently, so that keeps the boat driving straight in choppy water or going over wakes. They're also supposed to keep the boat from porpoising at high speed. They're pretty easy to put on, so now let's go give them a try. Punch it up a little bit, let's see what happens. Well, as you can see, this is great. No climb, no porpoising, just nice, smooth running. I'm very impressed. Well, one of the biggest things I notice is it does not need to be steered. It just drives straight, no matter what. It's pretty amazing. Usually, I have to fight this back and forth. Look at that.
Well, I do hope you enjoy seeing what can be done if you're a do-it-yourself boater like me. I saved thousands of dollars by doing the work myself and am now enjoying the ride again. Plus, I have really learned a lot. Well, the pros for me is there's just no wobble during the steering at slow speed. There's no huge bow rise during the acceleration. And there's no porpoising during any wake jumps. And they're really easy to install. As far as cons, I don't have any. Thanks for watching, folks.